I got up super early this morning and I've glued in some 18 millimeter by 18 millimeter framing timbers to form the support of the, the cockpit sole for the self draining cockpit in this first hole. This, I think, will be the uh, the starboard hole. I've used some offcuts to brace the framing timbers against the hull sides so they don't go anywhere. They're all glued in. It may not be perfectly symmetrical, but I'm okay with that. It's within a centimeter from end to end. I've measured it, so all good there. I bought some more timbers to then start doing uh, the port side hull here as well. So in here, these are the 18 by 18s. And then I've also got, these are, these are hardwood, this is a Tasmanian oak for making the, the combings for the, the hatches which will go in here. So the idea with the hatches is that they will pretty much take up the whole cockpit. These bits here will lay in, in here, create a lip for the hatch and the hatch will fit over that and you actually stand on the hatch. And the idea there is that the hatches are gonna be nice and big, but the boat will still have the structure it needs. Some of them are a little bit wonky, but uh, for the most part, they're pretty straight and I'll be able to use them. And then the, the wonky bits like through here, we'll cut them in half and I'll be able to take this bend out. Basically what I wanna be able to do is, uh, this is my swag and I want my swag to be able to fit in here. So if the hatches are big enough, you'll be able to put that in there like so. So if you're not sure what a swag is, basically it's a, a self-contained canvas tent with a built-in foam mattress. You roll it out, it's super easy. Some of them have a hoop like mine, but basically within a matter of minutes, you've got somewhere to sleep. And this is what I'll be using on the deck of the boat. So that's what a swag is, that's the swag, and this is the hatch. I've just put some temporary buttons down the bottom here because obviously the, the whole bottom is in there yet. But you can see it will fit in there pretty easy. And the whole idea of the swag is that I don't need to set up a big boom tent if I just want to do a quick camp, take this out of the hatch, unroll it, Within 30 seconds, I've got my bed. So it's nice and simple. It keeps me perfectly dry. Some of the best sleeps I've ever had have been in the swag. So I do rate the swag. And if you haven't done yourself a favor and had a good night's sleep on a swag, particularly on a boat that's moving around a little bit, do it. You won't be disappointed. And when you do, give me a, a comment and a, a thumbs up and a subscribe because that'll be definitely worth it. Body sand is packed it in. Put the battery in. Battery has full lights. Put it on. Turn it on. Hasn't packed it in. So remember, I'm not a boat builder, I'm a sailor. I wanna get this built fast and I wanna go sailing, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna sacrifice on quality. It just means that um, maybe I'll be using a lot more paint than varnish. Let's just put it that way. But have a look at this. That is pretty good through there. Nice, clean fit. There's a brace keeping the pressure on too. It's a lot easier. That's pretty good through there. I'm happy with that. Nice and clean through there, another brace. It's a lot easier doing this when the hull is on its side and doing one side at a time. You can see in there, those gaps are definitely less than a millimetre. Nice and clean through there, that's a really nice one. And it's raining outside.
that's our port so hole behind me I've got the uh, depth support in place for the cockpit sole about to mix up some epoxy but before I do a bit of red wine boat building it's not the same without it oh, I love the charade Copy soil framing is all in. Now I'm going to take the belt sand and start cleaning up all these top edges here on the whole sides. And then after that, I'm going to put some really big, thick epoxy fillets in all the joints. Those big fillets are going to add a lot of structure. And then I'll put some fiberglass tape over the top of them. Make sure those bulkheads are really well bonded to each side of the hull. Let's get to it. So that's about 27 kilos for one hole. All it needs on top of this is the decking, fiberglass and paint. So most of the structures are already there. So if I can get away with that being about 35 kilos per side, that makes it 70 kilos for the hulls. And then probably about 100 kilos for the rest of it. It's around my target weight of 170 kilos. It's good, on track. Before I started making the combings for the hatches, I wanted to complete the filleting process, and that means I needed to make a, um, a 40 millimeter wide tool here to put some really big, thick fillets in over the, the initial ones. You can see that's gonna cover those up beautifully and add to the strength, and, but also importantly, separate the watertight bulkheads fore and aft, as well as the, uh, the little storage hatches underneath the cockpit sole. So filleting is a really simple process. The idea is you gotta squeeze all of the thickened epoxy right into the corner and then make sure you have a nice clean curve in and out of the corner to transition the load between the two surfaces. Keeping nice and smooth means the, the finish will look best. So a nice clean job just like that. I mean there's a little bit of excess there which I'll have to sand off later but I'm pretty happy with that. And once I've done this then it's on to doing the hatch combings. Onto the hatch combings. So, because the outside of the hull is slightly flared at the top, I'm using a marker. That way, when I use my rasp, I can see where I've taken the edge off, creating a vertical surface on the inside of the battens that make up the outside of the cockpit sole and the hatch combing. I sight down the rasp, making sure that I get it nice and straight and vertical. Then I take the 40 by eight millimeter Tasmanian oak strips, measure them to size, cut them with a little handsaw, pre-drill and then screw into position. Now it's important to note the screws are stay on the steel but they won't stay there once the glue has dried. They are purely there for the Tasmanian oak combing strips to hold their shape to the battens and then they'll be removed once the glue is dried and then those holes will be filled. It's a simple repeat both sides. The front and back faces of the hatch combing are vertical already so I don't need to use my rasp to straighten them out. It's just a simple case of measure and cut and fit into shape. And what I like to do is have them slightly oversized and I'd rather have it oversized and then sand down. Ideally I get it right first time and then I'd have to go back and forward trimming pieces. And that's it. From here I put some epoxy glue in and they're done. All right guys, that's it for this episode. If you're enjoying these videos, please make sure you leave a, a like. Uh, if you've got any questions, add a comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. If you want to support the channel, that's the best way to do it. But also come have a look at our vintageboardco.com.au wooden stand-up paddleboard kits and plans. There's some really cool stuff in there as well. So if you actually want to spend some money and get something out of it, then that's probably the best way to do it. But uh, either way, thanks for watching, guys. In the next episode, we'll be gluing on the bottom skins for this first hole, making the hatches, and then start making the cockpit 
uh, sole and hatch combings for the second hull, which is the left hull porthole. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.